record to the cloud. Well, good morning, guys. I hope you guys all slept like a baby. This is a super easy trade room uh, on July 25th, 2019. I'm starting to date the videos differently as per, I believe it was Randy's re request. So I hope that helps you guys find them. So this morning we're gonna avoid any USD pairs because as you know, we have a ton of uh, news coming up on that and we don't wanna play. So Euro, most of the Euro news has passed, fortunately. When we kind of saw what happened, it shot up. And now it's right back where it started because this is a four hour candle. So I'll go to the one hour time frame. Let's see. Yeah. Thank you. It's my daughter coming in here. So what happened in this candle in these two time frames? It shot up 20 pips, which is a lot for this pair. And back down 24 pips. So we totaled about 45 pips that moved just from news and news alone. So we're going to kind of hold off on any euro pairs or USD pairs until that's said and done. But I will tell you that I just got an alert on uh, CAD CHF. And as you can see, we broke past the, the resistance. This is a good buy. I did take this in my live account as well. I got in a little earlier than this. It's currently still moving up because we have our triple arrows on the one hour daily support four hour support triple arrows crossover broke the 50 with momentum so it didn't just kind of tickle like over here came back to retest it and kind of played around a little bit and now it's taken off so seeing how i trade mostly off the four hour we're going to go here this doesn't have a whole whole bunch of support coming up so easily you get your 20 30 pips out of this Half your average daily range, or it can keep coming up. I mean, that's not our job to know. Our job is to go with the, where the trend is going. Uh, Kevin, can everyone else hear me okay? Yeah, the sound is good. All right, cool, Kevin. Um, so can somebody type in him in the chat and let him know that he may just have to click call in using internet or call in using... Um, the phone or whatever else he's using to dial in. So, because I think the audio is working. You all can hear her talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sign out of Zoom and sign back in. There we go. Hope that helps. If somebody can kind of help him make sure he finds the right way, that would be awesome. All right, guys. So are there any pairs you guys want me to take a look at specifically? We knew this was selling. Somebody had posted in a group last night that they were looking for a buy based off of the one hour time frame. But most of us who have traded long term know that we definitely don't take trades only off the one hour. We're looking for a four hour confluence and this was selling. So it dropped, it's kind of retesting. Also, it's gonna keep coming back down. But we'll kind of keep clicking through. Let's see. That looks good, but it's we've missed that momentum move and there's no daily support yet. So this could just be a pullback to the ADR high before it continues to drop. So we'll see, there's nothing there. Again, we broke previous support, which I like. We're pulling back. But as you guys know, Odd is just tanking. Odd is super, super weak right now. I don't typically trade this pair because I don't like the way it moves at all. It's just the two currencies are too correlated for me. So I kind of avoid this pair like the plague because usually, as you guys can see with the currency strength, in general, when one is going up, the other one's going up. When one is going down, the other is going down, and it kind of just moves. This moves the same so much that I don't understand how the contrast is creating this move because it's not a huge enough contrast because of the way their currencies are valued. So I kind of avoid this pair personally. But we do have a few daily dots, two more, and this is confirmed. So for New York, obviously this against the four hour triple air, so that's not advantageous, but it is with the trend, and the trend is currently down for most on pairs. 
So this is something to kind of keep your eye out for because the trend is going down. So provided we don't break this trend line, this is looking like a good sell. A lot of people are taking the daily dots just off of one dot, which if that works for them, more power to them. But either way, this is against triple arrows and it is definitely with the trend going down. That's a nice flag and it's still going down. Still on profit on NZD CAD. Yeah, that was a good move, DJ. That was a really good move. And there's no news for that. So even on these awful weeks when we have too much going on, there's always pairs that we can trade. We're not going to want to go extremely heavy. We're not going to want these to be our extreme <laughs> trades where we're going for 30% per trade or something. But you can still make a profit and have to pay your bills every week, even on the news weeks. So th this daily dot is against the four hour arrows, but it, it is definitely with the daily dots. So for those of you who trade the daily dot method, you have some room for this to pull back. Lots and lots of room. Figure out how much it's gonna move. Let's see. Any questions, comments, or um, pairs you guys want me to take a look at as I just kind of click through and see what's setting up? I skip all the euro pairs and USD pairs. <laughs> Boom. GBP is finally making higher highs across the board. And then there's no guarantees. Obviously, it's still 4X. We're breaking out of our huge consolidation and downtrend we've had for a while, which is exactly what we want to see. So our hope is that this is going to go up just as far as it went down or at least 50% of that, which is still hundreds and hundreds of pips on any GBP pair. So you guys saw this went down by over 1,000 pips. So even a 50% retrace, you're looking at 500 pips, 400 just to play it safe. So for this to test 50% is very, very likely. It'll probably be like around the, well, this is the 61, so this is the 38, give or take, obviously. For it to go up to here would be pretty likely. This is for you swing traders who like to trade long term like me. Yep, get your 300 pips and get out. Go back to the four hour. You do have confirmation to hold this. Your GBP is way stronger than your CHF, and that's even on the four hour time frame. We're breaking above the zero line MACD. Our ADX had a nice kind of touch and reject. Momentum is facing up. We broke the high. Triple arrows, four hour daily momentum. We broke the 50, came back and kind of retested, which is what we want to happen. We want this to happen because that's confirmation. That's proof that this is going that way. Not always, if nothing's written in stone, but it definitely is proof that it is going that way. So I'd expect this to go up and give you a good 300 pips. I mean, at bare minimum. Let's see. Even if we just went to that next support, which would probably be like that 21 point whatever, you're still looking at 150. 150 easy pips on GBP CHF. No major news coming out, at least not at this time. We're going to skip GBP USD because of the news. Let's see. Hey, Jenny. Hey, who is this? I can't this see DJ. Hey, DJ. Hey, so on that pair you're on right now, would you wait for it to, to retrace a little bit more before you got into it? On GJ? Um, I think it was the... the G chef, chef. Yeah, the chef one. So like I mentioned last night, there's a lot of different ways to trade. You have to decide what kind of trader you are. So for instance, if you took this entry, you're risking the possibility of a pullback before it takes off. But then you've taken your trade, you're good, you're confident in your analysis, and you can walk away. Your second option is to put a uh, uh, buy limit. So when price retraces by, for instance, 50% of this candle, then you're going to take the buy to go up. The, the problem with that is it may or may not retrace to that exact point. And then, of course, you have the option of a buy stop, which makes your, your stop loss even bigger, if you're asking me. Sorry about that. So it's totally up to you. The fact that it broke this resistance for me it is enough. But again, because of the move and everything, I've been trading mostly off the four hour time frame. So once it breaks that level, 
I'm confident of the trade. I'm not afraid um, of a little bit of a pullback. I'm not gonna freak out, but it broke this resistance and it broke it hard. So the odds is gonna come up back up here. We're gonna go to the one hour chart now. The odds is gonna come up and test that ADR high. It's pretty high. We've already got a wick kind of coming up. One hour arrow because of the big move that it made. It's basically programmed to catch a certain amount of pips. My, my, my best guess is it's gonna come up 25-ish pips, retest or play around a little while before it shoots off. It doesn't mean that it can't come all the way back, but you already had all of this consolidation, all of this indecision, came back down, made a lower low, kind of kept going, and now we've got impulse. This is a lot of green candles in a row. These are regular candlesticks. This is a momentum candle, came back and kind of retested 50% of that move. Uh, and, and now you're shooting off. So we broke that high. For me and the way I trade, I don't want to babysit this. I don't want to worry about this. So for me, I'm going to take my trade. I'm going to trust my analysis. I'm probably going to put my stop loss right here below this previous low because the reality is if it breaks that low, your analysis is now invalid anyhow. So why give yourself that much more room for the market to breathe if once it breaks this low, your analysis is already invalid? So I would probably just take the trade personally, but you have three options. You can wait till it breaks out further. You can wait till it re comes back and retests. Either of those two options may or may not result in you missing the trade entirely though. So it just depends on how you look at it. Which one, which one sounds the best to you? Yeah, I think I'm gonna wait for it to retrace a little bit. I just don't wanna have that wide of a stop loss. Let's see, and that's okay. So with where price is now, and it's moving up again, that's a 60 FIP stop loss. But this is also trading based off of the four hours. So when I said, how much can we get out of this trade? Nothing's written in stone. Obviously all those disclaimers you have to have. This pair moved down a thousand pips, moved back up a thousand pips, give or take, those are just rounded. But even this smaller move, we'll measure it just for GP. You know, 850 pips. So the odds that even if this isn't an actual reversal and it's only a, you know, Fibonacci kind of retracement, the odds that you're going to get, here, I'll even put it on here. Let's see. I don't usually use this tool, but we're going to use it anyways. Thank you, honey. Mm -hmm. The windshield guy is here to fix my car. So I had to get a new windshield. Okay, so this is where price is currently at. This was the full extent of the move. So even if it comes back and tests only the 23, right? Which is possible. And then it's going to keep going down. You're still looking at, like I said, 150-ish pips. You'll notice that these lines, usually they really line up, especially on your bigger time frames. So either way, 60 pips to 150 pip, risk to reward ratio is close to a three to one, right? That means you're gaining three times as much as you're risking. So you have to put that in mind. Everyone wants this super tight stop loss because they're used to trading off the 15 minute time frame. If you're going for a five or 10, 15 pip stop loss, you probably need to get off the higher time frames because your, your worst case scenario, you're looking at 150 pips. And then of course we've got your 38, like I said, around 300 pips. We were just guesstimating because as you get more experience, you'll be able to eyeball it. But even if it only goes halfway, you're looking at 500-ish pips. So your risk to reward is very good on this trade. So for me, I'm not gonna sit here and freak out and, and wonder if, hmm. See, that's not even fair. How do I delete that now? We went over this last night in class too. There we go. Double, double click the red uh, dash line and then right click and delete. Thank you. I, like, I know we went over this, but yeah. So no matter how you're looking at this, to me, I see a good risk to reward. To me, I see that the, the probability of this working out with all my indicators lining up, I don't trade off the day per se, but let's go back to the four hour, is very high. So once I'm 10, 20 pips in profit on a GBP pair, I'm gonna move my stop loss up anyhow on one of my trades, my bigger trade. Right, 
So for me, I'm not going to worry about those last couple pips and then miss this trade. So right now it's already shooting off. It doesn't mean it won't come back and retest. It may or may not. But at some point we have to stop being worried about, oh, that stop loss is too big and start realizing we're never worried about the, the size of the stop loss. Like I don't care if it's 100 pips or if it's 10 pips. The thing that you should be worried about is what percentage of risk you're risking per trade. And then you're worried about what is my risk to reward. So if I'm risking 60 pips, I'm okay with that, provided that my gain is greater than 120 pips, provided that when I'm, my targets are greater than, I like to try to keep it one to one is the very bare minimum I'll do, but I like to see it much higher. So on my swing trades, I'm going for two to one, three to one. And then your accuracy, even if your accuracy stinks, and let's say you're a newbie and you don't even know what your accuracy percentages are, you're still going to technically be profitable at the end of every single week. Provided you're sticking to a good risk reward ratio. So that's just me though. This is the beginning of this candle too. This can well that's the end of this candle. So this candle still has 45 more minutes on it. And I could definitely pull back down, wick down. When that next candle starts here in about 5, 45 minutes, there's a good chance we're gonna pull back to some amount and then just walk it off. Because the market hasn't done much this week because of all that news. So that exactly. candle is only 15 minutes old? No, this candle is three hours and 15 minutes old. Oh, okay. I'm thinking we're still in the one hour. Okay. Yes, sir. Does that make sense? Like, at some point, like we talked about last night with the whole brokerage topic, it's difficult. And even myself, I have tons more growing to do. We're all human. But at some point, we have to stop, you know, here. we have to start functioning in, we are technical traders. We are technical analysis. We are investors. So when we see this, we need to look at this not from a fear standpoint. It's do our numbers line up? Is the risk to reward worthwhile? Is the percentage I'm risking worth, you know, acceptable? Or is my margin acceptable? Is there news? We need to look at these this checklist of facts and not, well, I think I'm gonna maybe, uh, maybe if I just that that's not trading. Trading is rules and and numbers and a hundred percent non-emotional and that's kind of how I eventually got better was realizing that so yes sir thank you Jenny you are welcome see how it's this turned red because it's touching it it was orange when we first started talking I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure yeah it, it was I didn't realize that changed colors once the price touched it so it's not uncommon for this to either reject a little bit or just bust through it. And once this busts through, then yeah, you're looking for a nice pullback, that second or third candle, and we're taking off. And that's on a smaller time frame though. This is the four hour time frame. So yes, sir. Hey Jenny. Hey Eduardo, how's it going? I recognize your voice, right? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, sir. How many pips would you be in profit before you move your stop into profit? Um, that really depends on the pair. So you can't, that's what I'm saying. We can't have some steadfast, I, I have a 30 pip stop loss rule. And most people who do like they're, they're only successful for a small amount of time until they realize it doesn't work. So I can't always say that, Hey, I, I'm going to be 10 pips before I move my stop loss on a GBP pair. That is simply not enough room because right. I mean, it can just move a little bit on most pairs. Once I'm, if I'm scalping or I'm using like the flip-flop method or I'm going for less pips, if I'm in profit by 10 pips, I'm moving my stop loss up. On GDP pairs or swing trades, Stairmasters, if I'm in profit, maybe 15, 20 pair, 15, 20 pips, 25, 30 pips, especially like on NZD, GBP, NZD, then I'm gonna move my stop loss up. Oh, okay. So like give or take 30 pips on pairs that are not GBP? Yes, sir. Because okay. GBP moves more. So like logically here, let's go to GN. This is the average daily range on this pair is 74. This, this alone went up by 40 pips. Yeah. So this one just moves way more. That's why I would be like, eh, I'm going to kind of wait and see. Now this one, this one actually guys, you can wait for a pullback on this one. See how it's wicking at the top. It's nowhere near the ADR high. I'm still in NZD Swiss. It had a little, it spiked up a little bit, but I'm still in it. NZD Swiss? Yeah, that's what I'm in. Let's take a look. I'm selling it. It had that spike right there. That's a rough spike. Odds are, 
Let's see, this is a four hour time frame. Crossover. So if it comes up another 13 pips, worst case, 17. I'm still in profit. Do you think I should move my stop loss in profits? Uh, well, you know how I trade. I can't make that decision for you, but for me, like, again, I'm gonna say that trading is not about avoiding risk, it's about managing risk. So I manage my risk well. So if I'm in profit, how much are you in profit? Just 13 pips, it's very little. I was 40 pips, but after this bike, it was only 13 pips. Okay, so I know your schedule, um, cause I've worked with you. Let's see, sorry about that. So for instance, let's say you moved your profit, your stop loss, three pips in the profit, okay? And let's say it doesn't touch that, it keeps going down. You, you lost or gained nothing, the trade is going in your favor. But what happens if price comes up to this and then keeps going? Well, like, I don't know what your, what your lot size is, but if you had for instance, a standard lot on there, you made 30 bucks. And so you're happy with your 30 bucks and then it comes back and it retouches that point and you retake it for a sell. You can do that all day long. The problem comes in when now price has retraced all the way back, now you're negative by 40, 50 pips and whatever, and it goes against you. That's just not a risk I'm willing to take. So I'm gonna close out with my three, four pips happily, especially as you get to bigger lot sizes. Are you still compounding at 30%? Uh, the compound, I brought it down to 18. Okay. Then I'm assuming uh, yes, lot size is reasonably high. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good size amount. I just closed it in 13 pips profits and the, the indicator that I use, it will let me get back in if, I, if it keeps going back down. So it's not a big deal. What indicator are you using to let you know if it keeps going back down? Well, I used two of them that really helped me to get back in and, and, or out. I used uh, the SSL that I sent you. Oh, it's, it's a, a, it's, it's a set at 12, right? Oh, yeah, one, it's mine set at uh, 13. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And then I use another one. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it don't. I use two indicators that don't repaint, and one of them basically says we're still selling, and the other one lets me get back in. Does that make sense? Yep, gotcha. What's the other oh. one that's called? SSL. It's the SSL, and I forgot what the other one is called. You want me to check? I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, here I have the SSL on my chart. I, I tried to set alerts with it and I was not super over enthused. Let's see. I don't know what I'm well, doing. Well, I don't use it for alerts. I usually just to just look at it here and there. Or not here and there, but So what I have work. is a couple different crossover arrows. The cool thing is is this is obviously happening first. Uh, let me confirm this is set at ten. I'll set it at twelve. Mine's, mine's at thirteen. Okay. Yeah, what with alerts, that? I mean if you did you, how was it for you? You had too many alerts. No, I don't. Well, no, <laughs> I don't have too many alerts. But the problem was when I tried to create an alert for this, it was giving me an alert when it broke out of the channel and not when the cross happened. So I was not satisfied. Okay. Well, I mean, I only check my charts like twice a day now. So I checked this out to see that wick. And granted, this yep. is, uh, let's go to a better chart. Nice. You guys see that? That's awesome. Let's go to this right uh, chart. The sale. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat? Sir, can you repeat what you said? Well, anyways, I don't hear him. But okay, oh. so this, this is where regular candles. So now we're going to go back to this. Oh, come on. There we go. Here's that SNL, SSO. Let's make sure I set up the same thing. And I was playing with it and I couldn't create an alert because it does the same thing as the crossover. It's just mildly different timing. So this orange arrow would be where the eight and 18 cross. That's what you see with the orange arrow. So this is happening first, but I couldn't create an alert based off of this cross. What was happening was I was getting an alert based off of it leaving the channel and that's way too much noise and I can't do it. So okay. maybe that's when it was, but okay. In terms of your NZD chef, it looks like it's wicking to the upside. Those were uh, Hikanashi Ash, Hikanashi candles. So let's see what this is doing. That's why I have regular candles. It's because on this chart, you see that, oh, now it's gonna prove me to be a liar. Hold on. That huge wick, it's, it's um, 
misleading. It's very misleading. So I'd much rather have my actual candles and I know what's going on than to have to wonder all the time. Okay, I already but called that trade. You've got your crossover according to this strategy. And of course it's in the same direction with the daily dots. I mean, if this, remember what the tool says, the tool says this doesn't count until this candle closes. This candle is not closing for another 35 minutes. So at yeah. some point you have to be super solid on your rules, which means that, hey, guess what? If we're only here, so if I'm gonna move my stop into profit and provided this does not cross and close, I'm gonna stay with it if you're using the four hour chart. Uh, so you could have maybe stayed in, but either way, there's nothing wrong with that. And once you have the next confirmations to sell it, just resell it again. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. When, once I get more selling confirmation, I just resell it. Yep, worst case scenario, you've got yourself 13 pips. <clears throat> Yeah. Get yourself 13 pips and you're happy with that, so you move on. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I mean, as long as it's not going down. I mean, as long as my account's not going down. Yeah, exactly. Well, once you're really trading and you're compounding, the most important thing you can do is manage your losses, is to decrease the amount of times you take a loss. Because one loss yes. at 50 standards, okay, is a lot of money. One loss at a lot of standards is a lot of money. So I'd rather manage my loss and find another trade. So that means on some of my winners, they don't really count as the full amount of pips, but it also means I didn't take any losses, so my accuracy is nearly 100%, and then I keep growing. It all just depends on how you want to trade, though. Yeah, I, I used to do the 30% the at 30 pips, remember that? Mm -hmm. But now I brought it down to 18%, and instead of letting my, instead of my trade being a one-to-one risk-reward, I let them, I try to go for a one-to-two. Better? Does that makes sense. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so that's why that's the only reason why I brought it down to eighteen percent. And I mean, it's also, in my opinion, like pocket word, more common sense to do a one to two than one to one. So now all my trades are at least my, my take profit. Like let's say my stop loss is thirty pips away, my take profit is going to be sixty pips away. If that makes sense. No, that's that's perfect. Yeah. I mean, you should. So risk management is the best thing you can do. It's by far the best thing you can do. I mean, because think about it this way. If you, if you are trading one-to-one, -one, you have to be right more often than not to be winning. If you're trading anything higher than a one-to-one, -one, you don't even have to be right that often to be winning. You can be right less than half the time and still be profitable. Less yeah, than that, that's pretty awesome. I want to get that clean so I can pull some money out. What? That's stupid. <laughs> So like if you if you add good risk management, like always moving your stop and a profit to that, now you've got some insanely high accuracy and now you're really growing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, somebody had mentioned in the chat UCAD. Like I mentioned, I'm not you guys are more than welcome to play with UCAD. I am not interested in USD pairs. I've gotten really good at following my rules. It doesn't make me uh, great or anything else. It just makes me who I am. So I'm not playing with this because the US dollar just has too much news. And I don't want to guess and wonder and be in a position where it shot up or shot down. This is a demo account. I don't remember when I entered that trade. That's not fair. Sorry. <laughs> but either way, it definitely ends up, I'm not taking any new trades. I'm guessing it's probably over here somewhere. Because I did not take any USD trades for right now. And I won't be taking any USD trades for right now. And it's probably just about in profit, but either way, does this look good? It absolutely does. Uh, we would be waiting for like the crossover. We've got our daily dots. This is saying so. I don't like how the US dollar and the Canadian is where that is. And I don't, this cross is good, but I don't want to play. There's too many other opportunities to be playing around with. Uh, Camry, let's see. I will take a look at GJ. GJ is still kind of in that funky phase. So let me go back to CAD JPY, somebody had mentioned this. On our four hour chart, this is saying sell, but we've got daily dots. So when something like this happens, I don't want to confuse myself. I want to stay with my analysis. I kind of set up in a chart similar to this. Actually, it is this. And I would drag and drop my pair over here. So I would look at it from a non-bias standpoint. And again, like we talked about on the call, if we just take a look at this, this is definitely a going up. We'll kind of keep it super simple. It's going up. However, comma, we did break the trend line. 
hence the reason we got that four hour cell on the on the triple arrow system. So the fact that it broke the trend line, this is odds are going to be a mild pullback. By how much, we don't know for sure. But we're waiting on a crossover. We've got probably a day and a half of daily dots. Let's find out together. Yeah, about a day and a half. So two more dots would be two days. And we're still in this consolidation kind of point. So that's three, six, and then four. So two more dots would be here. It's kind of just deciding what it's going to do. So for me, I don't really think that going against the four hour triple arrows and the fact that it broke the trend line, it is a super advantageous thing. I don't hate it. And the odds are this is going to go up by how much it's, we don't know, but this was a nice flag, you know, according to this whole upward trend thing. So could it definitely break that trend line and keep going up? Absolutely. Cause we do have our Canadian dollar, which is really strong. But the Japanese yen is also decently strong. So I usually only trust this on the one hour for the most part. It's where I take it to be most effective. So our Canadian dollar is strong, but the Japanese is right behind it. So for now, I don't see this to be a good entry. Because it's just, it's too, well that moved quick, didn't it? But the, it's just too much consolidation. So until it decides which way it wants to go, I don't see this to be a super great pair we're in this nice little ranging consolidating thing or what, what Pat would call a flat top. So when there's so many other opportunities and I only need to pick a few a week, I mean, I, I don't want to play with this because we're going against the four hour triple arrows, which I don't like to do. I like to try to stay in the same direction as those for the most part. I mean, except for my daily dot thing, but we don't have like a stair, stair master, which would be the purple dots that are going with the triple arrows. We are below the 50 on the four hour. We're still below the 50 on the one hour as well. We don't have any huge momentum move to say that this is one way or another. And right now we're just ranging. So to me, what I see is this market could go either way. Our currency strength is telling us conflicting things. Uh, I, I just don't see this to be a super advantageous trade. Not to say that it can't go really, really great because it can. But if I were to be playing with a CAD pair, I'd be playing with like, EuroCAD, which we know we're staying out of that, that has a little bit more news, CAD Chef, or even on CAD, but I'm not gonna be playing with stuff that's super right up here and, and next to each other, because you're usually gonna find stuff like this, that consolidation. And since our accounts can only hold X amount of trades at a time, particularly if you're compounding and you're trading standards, then I don't wanna be stuck with a couple of standards on this trade waiting to figure out what it does, when I could have easily taken, for example, CAD CHF, Okay, which is moving, has made a clear direction. It's made a decision. CAD is stronger than CHF. We have a lot of confirmations on the four hour and the one hour. Yeah, this one is against the one hour, the four hour triple arrow, but it's doing so with momentum. It's doing so with a daily dots crossover of the eight and 18. This is a bullish engulfing candle. You broke the previous high. So for me, this is a powerful move. This is the kind of move we're looking to enter in on but CAD JPY right now isn't doing the same thing. Guys, we make money based off of volatility. So this right here, it doesn't tell us enough. No matter how many daily dots we have, no matter if we have a crossover or everything else is lining up, this doesn't tell us to enter. This big momentum, this is when you're like, oh, okay, I see we broke a high. We're definitely going up. It's in the direction of the daily dots. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna ride it for however many pips. I don't think this is gonna go for 100 pips because of that triple arrow but enough to make an impact. So I'll do the same thing on this chart. Boom, that's momentum. See how we broke this high and we broke this high. Two different highs. We broke here and we even broke here. So we are officially making higher highs in the same direction as the daily dots. ADX and MACD and momentum, sorry, volume and momentum. Of course, we have a crossover of our, our moving averages. I'm sure our money tree string line has changed as well. And now we have a clear direction. That's what we're doing. So this one looks to be a much better buy than the other one or, or move period. Just so you know. And as for GJ, for the gentleman who asked about GJ, let's see. GJ, again, it's consolidating. So right now, I really like the, how this pushed above it. 
and most of these pairs are buying. You can see this as a demo. <laughs> I kind of use my demo account in a different way. I kind of do things based off of certain indicators or alerts that I use, see how they bear out. Um, but either way, having said that, we do have triple arrows. That's obviously good, but we have all these wicks both ways. And like the market has no idea what it's doing. So it broke above the 50, and then I like this momentum candle, but now we've got those stinking daily dots. And I can't really trust those daily dots personally. So again, if I'm looking for a GBP pair, I'm not going to be looking for like GCAD, GJ, or GU. I'm going to be looking for like GBP to any of these other ones because that's going to give me the most bang for my buck. So if I zoom out, I'm going to the one hour. Let's see. We already have arrows to the downside and that's a full set of arrows in the same direction as the daily dots. Wicks to the upside. I don't like how it rebounds, but no matter how you look at this, this is just not deciding. Like, so there's, we don't know what's happening with this and I don't think we're gonna know super clearly what is happening with this at this moment. CAD JPY might be moving now though. So you see- Wicks got really weak. Yeah. Swiss did get weak, huh? And look, look how far GBP dropped while talking in the last few minutes. So this is, we're coming up on the New York Open right now. So it's 8.35 Eastern time. So the market's gonna do some funky things for like the next 40 minutes, and then it's gonna pick a direction. But having kind of our confirmations and what we're looking for is still beneficial. So for the person who asked about GJ, does anybody have anything that they wanna say about GJ? Your opinion? Anybody at all? Hmm. Hey Jenny, I have a question. Yes, sir. At what, uh, I mean, at what point in time, like how consistent did you have to be to finally say you were like full time, if that makes sense? Can you ask your question again? You cut out. Oh, like how could, whenever you first started trading till now, like how consistent did you have to be to consider yourself like really profitable and full time trader? Um, well, consistency is in the eye of the holder, and it also depends on how often you withdraw. You can have a consistency of like 93%, and then the other 7% blew your account. So that, I don't know if that's the, the best question to ask. I mean, so for me, I think you need to be making regular withdrawals. So if you can withdraw weekly, or bi-weekly, or monthly, then you're at a point where you're consistent enough to be considered a full-time trader. If you're at a point where your trading can pay your bills, then you're at a point where you're a full-time trader. Um, if you're at a point where your trading has paid off all your debt, or if you bought a house, took care of your mama, or, or any of those levels of things, I mean, I would personally, like how I define things in life, not to say that's, that's the hard and fast rule, but for me, like for those of you who are working, I would use trading to pay off all my debt, um, all my, or buy the house, or depending on your personal situation, I have some people in this group who have debt, some don't, some of them who don't work, so their goals are different. But for those who are like specifically working and wondering, okay, when can I walk away and fire my boss? My answer, if you were asking me, like from other coaching I did with other companies and other uh, home-based business industry stuff, it's pretty simple. So you've got all your debt paid off. You have now own a house. I'm kind of big on that whole own a house because it's uh, safety. If something ever happens, you don't have one month to pay your rent. You have 90 days uh, before the mortgage companies are coming. And if it's paid off, you've got only taxes and insurance to worry about. So you are in theory taken care of for the most part. Like you could probably live off of a McDonald's income or an Uber income if you have your house paid off. So to, uh, if you're asking me, my, my thing would be okay, pay off all your debt. Um, so, you know, trim the fat of your diet, pay buy your house. It doesn't have to be a magnificent mansion. Everybody wants the mansion, but trust me, you just need a maid if you get one of those. So uh, have a house, maybe, you put 50% down or you have it, you know, decently paid off and you have enough to live on for six months as in not in a trading account, but in a bank account, or that's one way to do it. Or I'd say, Hey, when my bills are paid for the year. So like on one of my accounts, I'll take up enough uh, money to pay the bills for the year. And if I can do that now, I can just play and kind of be leisurely. I can just kind of practice and, and hone in on different strategies and, and uh, how do you say, like get the accuracy down, like just super, touch and tickle my rules a little bit and just kind of really play with it and, and then start another little challenge or start another growth. Uh, 
but that's 100% up to you. Like, at the end of the day, I know your situation a little bit, Eduardo. Yeah. Like, to me, it would be okay. Do, is your house paid off? Or do you, do you, do you own a home right now? You yeah, we have, both, all, our, all our houses are paid off. Yeah, the house we have are all paid off. Okay. Well, your goals need to be a lot bigger than you. Because, again, I know your story, a little bit of it. Yeah. Your goals need to be bigger than you. Not to be, and call you out, but... I think your goals need to be bigger than you if you're asking me. Your goals need to be okay. To be a full-time trader, I'm consistently making, you live in California, so probably at least five or 10 grand a month because California is expensive, right? Yeah. Um, for you, it would be, I'm donating, you know, 20% of my, what I withdraw every time. I'm saving 15% for taxes. And then the rest is what you get to spend or live on or reinvest. So like in a business concept, if you're withdrawing 10 grand a month, and let's say you're donating your 10%, that's already 1,000 gone. You're saving 15% for taxes and that's, you don't have any dependents or tax exclusion. So you probably need to save like 20 for sure. And that's with a good accountant. So now you've got another two grand gone. So you're looking at maybe seven grand, but don't forget in this industry, we need to have cash to reinvest. So, and I, I know that's not an issue in terms of some people on this call, but other people need to kind of factor that in. So let's say we need to be able to reinvest a thousand dollars every month because we know that we can grow a thousand dollar account to 10 grand with wins and losses every month, no matter what happens pretty consistently. Like, so you can, you can do it any one of those ways. So five to 10 grand a month, I'd say is bare minimum what you're averaging, but you need to be thinking of, okay, what other big things can I do in this world? Like what are your other goals and aspirations and dreams? What impact can you make? Well, I mean, my, my goal has always been to push myself into real estate, like buy a big property. That's always been my goal. Well, then leave California. California property is too expensive. Well, I live in Texas right now. Oh, I thought you were in California. I'm sorry. No, I it's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, like, I live in Texas. Yeah, well, Texas isn't bad. I understand they have different tax laws, so, but Texas real estate is doable. Um, but start buying them. Like, I don't know what you're waiting for. Just start doing it by one a year minimum. Yeah, just you want to just write it off. And don't pay tax on that property. Yep, get a good accountant. I mean, I don't know enough about Texas to help you, but I know enough about real estate because I own quite a few little properties too. So, I create a little goal list and say, okay, what, create a budget, like an Excel spreadsheet, kind of like the, the, the plan that I put in the group, create something like that where you say, okay, this is what I need in order to grow. This is what I need in order to feel confident or safe. And okay. you can really do that, so. Yeah. yeah, I'll start doing that, all of that today. Yeah, sorry, I was thought you were in California. I'm so silly. <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay, Thank you, Janet. Cool. You are welcome. Let's see, any other questions? Um, Henry, can you talk? Do you do your analysis on the four hour? Um, Henry, can you talk? I don't understand your uh, your question in terms of the indicator on the top right of my chart showing time. Hi, here. Jenny. Can you hear me? Hey, Henry. How are you? I'm fine. Are you? Fantastic. I've been on so many of your sessions, but I'm always oh. quiet in the background, just listening. <laughs> you can totally speak up because, listen, otherwise I'm just up here talking to myself and I'm rambling. I'm here for you guys to so just speak up, man. That would make me so happy. I promise. Okay, cool. So I have two questions. Uh, the first is about the 10 pips flip-flop strategy. Okay. Do you do any analysis on the four hour? Like, do you wait for the um, 8 EMA to cross the 18 EMA on the four hour before you drop down to the 15? Or you do all your analysis on just the 15 minute time frame? Um, so for this, this is kind of how I would have it set up. And this is a different, uh, different chart, granted. But either way, to give you an idea, like, if I'm going to be scalping, I'm going to be scalping. And granted, it's not my forte. My biggest, my biggest asset is trading long term. It's just more beneficial personally. So if I were to be looking at this, I would like the eight and the ten, the eight and the eighteen or you can even use smaller EMAs. And I, the only big difference I would do is I don't have to click to the four hour time frame to answer your question because I already have the four hour support on here. 
You can also choose to add them um, daily in one hour if you're scalping. So let's see if this has the. No, -uh, it does not. Let's go to this real quick. Better. Okay, so this one has the four hour support, right? That's what these dots are. This weird yellow one is just a different version of the daily dot. So now we have the daily and the four hour. And now if I wanted to, I can add the one hour. And the, the thought behind this is that I don't wanna go clicking between time frames because when you're scalping, you really need to be able to keep your eye on the chart. You need to be able to babysit this because you're using it pretty extreme stop loss, uh, not stop losses, lot sizes for a small amount of pips and it's compounding way more aggressively. So having said that, like, you can't watch that many pairs on that many time frames and be effective if you're asking me. So for the flip flop, you can know, uh, one gentleman in the group added a uh, time frame 50 moving average. It's so it, basically you can put the 50 moving average from the four hour onto your 50 minute chart. So you can definitely check with them, um, ask in the group and somebody will drop it in there. I don't have it at this moment, I think it's in my telegram. But okay. this is what we're looking at. We're on the 15 minute chart. This is not a fast mover. Okay, this is a slower mover. So this isn't gonna move extreme amounts. But for instance, if I had taken this trade, my first trade would be like when the money tree string line turned purple, my ADX lined up and the crossover happened on my MACD. That's your fastest entry. This is also one hour, four hour and daily support. So for this one, we'd be taking it for 10 pips. Of course, we got our 10 pips and that was easy. The fastest, well, it's not the fastest, yeah. but the safest entry is when we break the 50. Like everyone, you have to decide what kind of trader you are. The, the faster entry is great because your stop loss is tighter. But sometimes the stop loss tighter is going to get hit when the spreads widen or when life happens or whatever anyways. So for me, I'd rather take my more confirmed entry where it breaks the 50 with momentum, not like this, where it kind of tickle touches, you know, and nothing else. Like I want it to break. Yeah, I think I prefer the break of the 50. Exactly. So we know that we can take this because we got it on this camera. We got our 10 pips. We're good. I mean, and you can choose to stay in this provided like we are still purple on the money tracing line or still below the eight moving average, depending on how your chart is set up. But even over here, this is another trade opportunity depending on how you see things. So we've got the, and look, this is only on the 15 minute time frame. We're not checking every other time frame. We are now below the 50. So this okay, is cool. a high risk trade. Uh, then my second question is you, if you look at the top, hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second question is, if you look at the top uh, left of your chart, you know where you have those purple, yellow, exactly. Yes. Uh, how do you use those when you're trading? And this tells me what the market is currently doing to give you an idea. So uh, the yellow, this is in the notification group. It's called GG Trend. G is in, I can't think, uh, Gregory. Yeah, I, I have it. Yeah. I have it. I just don't know how to use it. Yeah. So this tells me what the market is doing in this, this time frame. So if it's purple, it's selling. Yellow is neutral or consolidating. Purple selling. Green is buying. Do I use it? Yeah. So everything on my chart, for the most part, I do pay attention to not religiously, but I'm not going to go trying to buy this market when minute to month is saying sell. Like, I don't care how many arrows I have. I don't care. I mean, I don't care what the scenario is. I don't care if we're at the best supply demand zone in the world. I am still not going to go against what the money is actually doing. And the money on this trade, let's go to a bigger time frame, is currently going down. Like it's been going down since 2018. Everything else is kind of just a pullback, pull back, a pull back. This is a heavy downtrend. So I'm not going to try to buy this market against the trend in general. Gotcha. Gotcha. Because it just shows you what the money is doing. That's all. It's it's yeah. all of this stuff is telling you the same story just in a different way. That's all. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jenny. And and You're okay, welcome. lastly, do you use a current currency strength meter when you are when you are scalping? Yeah, I like the currency strength meter. I don't care if you get the free one for the phone. I don't care which one you find on the uh, marketplace, just a free version is fine. But yes, I like the currency strength meter because it tells me a better story of what the currency
cryptocurrencies are doing. Okay. Thanks, Jenny. All You're right. welcome. And hey, to answer the rest of your question, the reason why I don't have to necessarily flip between a lot of time frames is because this is technically an entry, like I was getting ready to say, that there's a crossover, momentum goes up, this is saying buy, money tree turns green, we now have hourly support and our parabolic star is flipped. Could we have gotten our pips out of it? Yes, we could. But we are officially below the 50. So why am I going to take this trade when I'm, ideally I'm going to take this trade. I don't have to worry about what other time frames are doing because I know that I'm below the 50. So now when I see this, I've got an hourly support, probably an 8 and 18 cross. And if I don't have the cross here, I definitely have like a touch and a rejection. Prairie box bars, SARS flipped. Um, this is a little messy and indecisive until over here. But we also have a clean crossover below the zero of the MACD. And that's super appealing. So now again, I can take this for 10 pips because I'm already with the trend. So any of these okay. things that happen below the 50, I'm, I'm going with the trend. So this, with the trend, with the trend. It's like the okay. Stairmaster meets, you know, the flip-flop on a very tiny time frame and it works exceptionally well. Very, very well. So just to give you an idea, that's kind of how I do it. If I'm just okay, like, thanks Jenny. You are welcome. Right, we're going to the chat. All right, next question, comment, or pair. Uh, Jeff, how do you deal with Jenny. the Um, Hey, who is this? This is Aliqua, how are you? Hey, long time to talk to you. Happy birthday, by the way. Uh, thank you, I'm finally in the States, and I don't know which time zone I'm currently in right now. <laughs> oh, really? Well, welcome home. What? Where are you at right now? In Georgia. You're in Eastern time. You're not too far from me. Yes. Are you in North Georgia or South? Uh, kind of north, yeah. Well, I'm and, like in Atlanta, so that's like mid, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. So you may be six hours from me. We could totally drive that. Anyways, how are you? Jet lag and tired. Um, I just want to know, is this going to be a regular schedule um, uh, training, or are you just um, surprising us and blessing us with this, this morning training, or are you changing, adjusting your schedule? Um, well, this is typically Pat's slot, but he's right now in Brazil. So since he was in Brazil and I wanted to make up and do my due diligence for last week's class that I had no internet for, and Starbucks out here closes early, that's crazy. But either way, um, I said I would take this slot, which kind of worked out for all the team members. I do want to uh, change the time of my class beginning next week to something a little earlier, especially being in Eastern time zone, as you can imagine, that's 9 p.m. I'm all tired. <laughs> um, and also to a time that we can actually look at live trades. So Pat has uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning. So I was definitely looking okay. toward Monday evening and like Wednesday evening, but not so late. And then even a uh, one daytime class uh, potentially, or we, I'm waiting for Pat to get back. Like I said, everything's kind of up in the air. Him and I have been hit and miss in the last couple of weeks. So we'll kind of figure it out and let you guys know if you have a vote on what time you guys want my class to be or, or like, hey, you know, that, that time frame is really hard for me, but if you did it an hour early or two hours early, that would work for me. That's information I could definitely use when making that decision because um, I'm going to definitely make it earlier for my evening class and pick a day class because once we start that million dollar challenge, uh, and I don't know if we want to do million dollars or six figures, I'm, I'm okay with either, but we're going to definitely have some New York sessions anyways, one way or another, so. Awesome, awesome. All right. Yes. You are welcome. Welcome home. Thank you. Next comment or question or pair. I'm gonna finish skipping all the all the USDs. Hi Jenny. Hey Daniel, how are you? I'm doing good. Good to hear you guys. And uh, I'm very pleased to speak to you today because I've been looking forward for this. Uh, you, you, I, I'm in the UK and. Uh, you know, I, we, we don't get that chance to speak to you during the night. You're already asleep. <laughs> it's true. So, anyway, I, li, li, listen now. I'm, I, I, I'm having a problem with this uh, support and resistance zone with the dogs. And uh, <laughs> of late, I have noticed these four, uh, four hours dogs 
I'm having a problem sometimes uh, the price is coming through it even if one uh, like four hour I have one dot which is already permanent perm, uh, permanent and then the second one comes in and the past the, the price come comes through it and that is throwing me on the air and just destroying my strategy which I'm trying to follow okay so my first question is what time frame are you trying to follow those four hour dots on like the strategy which I'm uh, I have been trading on for for a while and I just want to keep it I don't uh, you know if you have your own strategy you you have to follow it is I'm, I'm I'm with 15 minutes but I look for the dots on uh, 4 hour I wouldn't take a trade without uh, a dot two dots on 4 hour Okay so hmm, you're you're on the 4 hour time frame and this your sure is set at 4 hours right Yes Okay, so two dots on the four hour time frame. Yeah. If you're only taking them in the same direction as the daily dot, you're gonna be way more successful first off, I can tell you that. And yeah. then price, so for instance, this is a buy, but it's against the triple arrows. And there was no like super good reason to go buying just because we see two dots. And then of course, we don't necessarily break through this area, but we did break below that area. So. Yeah, that's it. You see that like where you, you, you got your casa there, like uh, you got uh, three, the three green dots. Yes. Uh, let, let, let assume I'm not, take, I wouldn't take that, 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 uh, that, that trade uh, because I wouldn't go against the, the trend. But after second dot, after I see the second green dot, I jump to 15 minutes only to realize I'm having a trouble because the price is coming back down, I mean, uh, I want the price to keep on going up, but then it comes down on me. Okay, so we're gonna go off of this scenario because it's the chart that we currently have open. So we have, now this happened exactly at 12, the 1200 candle on MT4. So are you checking, I mean, you're telling me you caught this at the exact open of this dot, is that what you're saying? So you're yes. like, are, okay, and I can believe that. So. Every, some people know their four hour time schedule, some people don't. But let's go down to the 15 minute time frame just for conversational purposes. Let's see. So here we are. This is when that happened. If you caught yeah. the very beginning of that candle, mm -hmm. we're on the 15 minute time frame. So if you caught the beginning of that four hour candle, which is a 1200 candle, and you were looking to scalp this based off of, because if you're making your entries on the 15 minute time frame, you are scalping. Yes, sir. So you, you should have got your 10, 20 pips and got out. Okay, to give you an idea. Or pull up, let, let's, let's pull up a trade that you actually took and you lost on. So can you tell me a trade that you took? Oh, it's a, it's, it's a big bug, it's a big, and I don't. <laughs> it's a big bug. Can you tell me a pair that you took? Oh, it, it, it does for me on uh, GJ. It's, okay, it's so become a, a notorious character here, but it's uh, out of what is happening here in Britain anyway, so it's more understand, understandable. Okay, well, this is a dragon, so this one is considered the dragon. It moves very, yeah. a lot of volatility in this pair. But so, for instance, we're going to go to the four hour. Like, price can bust through these. And if that's not bad, and, and, and that's okay, provided you're going with the trend. I mean, and that that's, shouldn't super scare you. So like we went above this right here, we went above this right here, we're now going up. The odds are this is going to bust through this. That's coming. I mean, these dots happen, these dots are never not happening. And if you know that, then you know that if that's not on top, it's gotta be on bottom. And the only way that transition can happen means price busted through in a certain direction. and it had to start doing certain things. So let's say this white, this single dot right here. Right. Single dot. So you would yeah. not have taken these because you're telling me you enter on this. Well, actually you would have, because this would have been, a dot could have appeared on that second time and then busted through. A dot could have appeared. A dot appeared. 
I, I think uh, you, you are just exactly what I, what I have been. Uh, you see those two dots there? Those two is like a two separate dots. If you if you move to if you move your cursor to your right, there is two almost separate dots there. They are there. That's when uh, I'm having a lot of problems because I, once I see th there might be a, a a support there, then the the price come and come hit it and break it. Okay, but you would have entered on this candle because you're saying that you checked it on, on the opening of the next candle. So let's assume that we had a dot that did inevitably disappear right. on that next candle, right? And now we're going to the 15 minute time frame. And I'm guessing your stop loss is getting hit. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> okay. So if you bought and you were going for 10 pips anywhere on this one. If you had entered, the, and the, the, this is again, this is a not a perfect moment. This is not a perfect example. These are ugly, not pretty examples. So if you did literally get in at this candle, so the beginning of that second four hour candle, which again takes precision timing, that means yeah. you were in front of your exactly when that four hour candle closed. But either way, had you got in that, that candle that's up with my red line, it's hard to see, but I'm gonna wait for my computer to stop freezing up. Here we go. Do you guys see how that's a bullish candle? Yeah. Okay. So even if we got in at the very if we got in at the beginning, this is where we would have gotten in. If we got in at the end of the candle, the end of the 15 minute candle. This is where we would have gotten in. This is early, so this is around this time, an hour or two earlier than this. But watch this, if you really did get in at the beginning part of that four hour candle, I mean immediately, this already went 16 pips in your favor. Uh, and I'm being generous because technically it went close to 20, I'm trying to give room for a spread. If you got in at this time at the close of that 15 minute candle, or like let's say you're allowing yourself 15 minutes to do your analysis on each pair. Yeah. And again, you went 30 in your favor. So if you're scalping, even according to what you're doing, this would have worked, provided you had the right management and fast entries. Like I give myself 15 minute time frames to set up my alerts sometimes, I'll go through my trades. And I have to do that because what it's doing is it ensures that my, my analysis and my accuracy is going to be right. So if I'm just like playing around, fiddling around at the close of every four hour can, and like I don't have a schedule, then I'll never know when I'm taking trades or when I'm at the charts. So I need to know when I'm at the charts and how long it takes me to sit through every pair that I actively trade and, and set up a strategy accordingly. So even on this one right here, these are based off of one dot, the next dot that opens. So remember we drew this on the, the very next dot. So this is again, early in New York, this is, uh, what time is that? I know the answer to this. So it is 6 a.m. This is the 1500 candle, 8 a.m. Whatever, this is early New York. I'm gonna have to reload my time zones because I just moved, so bear with me. Point is, this also went in your favor by more than 20 pips. So had you gotten in at the time you said you got in or even reasonably in the same time frame, so this gives you one hour to find your trade and you were going for 10 pips, you should have closed in profit. Or had you had good trade management, which means once you're in profit, you moved your stop loss up, you should have closed in profit. And again, these are not, these are not pretty examples. These are not like the perfect Forex examples people make YouTubes on. That is literally ugly examples where there's only one dot. These are ugly examples. And you still would have got your 10 pips doing it that way. And that's ugly. You, you see like uh, where, where we are right now, where the price is, where is hoovering there right now. It have broken that for our, uh, you see, you see the, those dots, it have gone through there. Yeah, so that's, you should be buying. That's, that's where the problem comes in for me. Because uh, if you go back to maybe for our, I'm very sure one, one that green dot, there is no two green dots. Four this is one, this is a, the, this, uh, yeah, let's go to the 15. Yeah. 
this this just appeared because this is a brand new candle so this literally appeared in the last four minutes which means we don't trust it yet first off yeah but either way we are breaking previous highs we are in the direction of the four hour uh triple arrows we we have are above the 50 we are, have a crossover this was consolidating like i told the other gentleman a few minutes ago about gj but now we finally have our breakout so what do we have here we actually broke out that's exactly what we want to see so we so, want this to happen now we want to buy so does th th that mean that uh, the, the resistance level which is there that that zone which is uh four hour zone there it's it's not valid it's nothing then that's correct well but a lot of people like freak out at the thought of uh repainting indicators but here's what i want to show you watch delete this indicator i'm going to delete everything delete delete i'm even going to delete my fancy daily dots delete okay yeah so we are on let's pick a pair of not in okay we are currently on euro usd right this is a naked chart this only has traditional japanese candlesticks okay that's what we see on this screen when i um how do i show you this i'm gonna go to my four hour chart and i'm gonna zoom all the way out i'm gonna zoom out as far as i can i want kind of the big picture well this is too choppy so i can't really work with that so now i'm gonna zoom back in okay so now we're looking at a perfect head and shoulders pattern but if we already knew it kind of broke that trend line can you see that that's your left shoulder that's your head yeah, I, can, I can see it i can see it yeah. okay but for support and resistance purposes watch this we're going to go to a line chart so we are now officially at a line chart we're going to zoom out a bit we're going to take on our current screen the most obvious point uh, this, point, yeah. this is this is just basic 101 it's nothing fancy there's no perfect art or science to it yeah. we're just going to take some of the spots where price turned around and if you notice they kind of follow suit there's no perfect science again there's no super right way there's supply and demand and whatever we can get super picky and draw way more than this but let's keep it very simple for the sake of conversation yeah because we have to be able to, to talk so now we're going to go silly me there we go this is clearly okay this is clearly support this is this is definitely a resistance zone the odds are we have daily dots or four hour dots or some dots here price came down it's just trading between the zones price broke through that it didn't make this invalid in fact it makes this area very important um hold on insert a shape you know, I can tell you something which I have just seen because the same same process that's which you have followed that's what I exactly do on uh, plotting the, the 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 support and resistance zone. I put the 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 the, the line uh, the line graph and then I I trace my support and resistance. But what I've been doing, I've been trying to uh, to trust the dot more, and I don't know why. So now I got my answer. Well, look, there's no wrong. So here. What I wanted to show you was this purpose. I'm going to make these ones green and purple because I just want to follow suit. I want to do what I usually do so I can read them accurately. You'll notice that this happens in and around the same time. Okay, now we're going to put drop this on here again. So how do we draw in more? Like if we went super detailed with our little drawing resistance area, which we did not do, you would have seen that most of those super detailed ones line up with the one hour. And then if, if we stuck with just the extreme high and the extreme low, you'll see that that mostly lines up with the daily. Like it's all correlated. It doesn't make it invalid. In fact, it makes it very valid. So now we've got our, did I do that wrong? I think I did. Oh, silly me. Okay. Others, input, one hour. So I'm gonna delete this one. Okay. Like that. So you'll notice that most of this is lining up perfectly with the four hour resistance. Not exactly in the right area every time because we didn't get too picky and we used the line chart. But this is all follow suit. So yes. we'll have to go back down now to the line chart. Okay. You'll notice that if we had kept drawing lines, 
in yeah. all these random areas where price stopped, it would line up perfectly with those four hours. And then same thing, we'll only have a few dailies on here based off of uh, less support and resistance. So it's not bad. When price comes down and breaks this zone, breaks our trend line, break, not our trend line, but breaks our support and our resistance, our supply and demand, or breaks our super easy dots, that is not a bad thing. In fact, it's a confirmation thing. This is an awesome zone to be looking for then. Because when price breaks this, so it broke this low, it broke this low, it tells us it's selling. And now we can confidently know it's gonna keep selling into previous support or resistance. When price breaks this, cool, now we know it's actually gonna keep selling, maybe come back up and retest, which it did in this case. And we know this is a seller's market. So we have some consolidation clearly, but then what does it do? Only a couple dots, which of course is confusing people. And that's frustrating people even like yourself. But that is not a bad thing, because look, when price broke that, that little tiny resistance here, the little two green dots, it turned into a massive sell. That's an area, that's, a, that's like a trade execution zone. That's a good thing. It's good. All right, that, that, that's, uh, that's uh, I, I think I, I'm gonna, I gonna follow up with that, uh, plotting my own, uh, the way I have been doing and, and just let the dots take, take over. But uh, it, it's a good explanation, thank you very much. And I hope that uh, Jenny you will be able to do these classes during the daytime. I, I we would love it here because we, we, we love your classes as well, as, as that's one. Awesome, I'm super glad to hear. I will definitely let you guys know is this a good time generally for you guys out there? Oh yeah, oh brilliant time. Oh brilliant time for us. Okay, awesome. That works great for my schedule too, to be honest. How many days would you do in a week? Uh, when I do the challenge, I'm gonna probably do a lot more days, but for right now it would be two. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay, can you At this challenge, me? are you gonna be doing live classes? with people and say let's 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 focus on this this pay and let's let's look the chart and then it's us to take our decision but is it going are you, are you going to be guiding people how to do it yes sir that's correct all right okay. so I, signals based which i'm not super big on signals but i i totally get it uh the purpose would be yes we want some other people to confirm what i see but either way we would be going heavy on the lot size We'd be analyzing a couple of pairs together. We'd pick probably only one. Sometimes if we had some time or we were bored or it was a rainy day, we might go for two. Oh, one moment, guys. I've got to sign this paperwork for this windshield. Hold on. No, no okay. Okay, sorry about that, guys. He had to have me sign his little phone. So yes, uh, we will take signals. We will um, we will definitely be going heavy on the lot size. It will be very high risk. And the idea would be we take only one trade at a time because your account only can't hold more than two. So we want to give it plenty of room to breathe. And it's, it's kind of all or nothing. So it's, it's a lot to, for most people to stomach. So just to give you an idea and all fairness. But there we go. Thank you very much. You are welcome. I'm gonna go back to my little Zoom meeting controls. There's our chat. All right, any other questions, comments? Um, resistant dot, Jimmy PCA. Good morning. Good morning, who is this? This is Ricardo Jenny. How are you? Fantastic. Good. I just want to find out. Well, I heard the guys were speaking just now about the challenge. So I got some information there. Um, I was asking you the question about confirming the arrows. How do you confirm the big arrow? One and two. If I'm trading off of the 50 minute time frame, should I just go for 10 pips at a time? What is your yeah. thoughts? If you're trading off of a smaller time frame, I mean, if you have time to babysit the trade, you can, you can kind of let it run. But in general, if you're trading off a smaller time frame, you're going for less pips, always. 
because the analysis is only good for less pips. When you're trading off the bigger time frame, your analysis is good for more pips. Great. So if I'm looking at the larger time frame to find the direction, and I come to the smaller time frame, even though I'm executing on the smaller time frame, I should just go for 10, 10 or 15 pips, as you're saying. Well, I hear you saying 10. So 10 is the best thing to do. Yeah, I, so a lot of people have had success with the now and later strategy. Uh, Pat has extreme amounts of success with that strategy and more power to him. We are a great team because we see things differently and we do things differently. So having said that disclaimer, I am personally not a super big fan of the now and later. Like I like the stair map. And I'm, I'm a big fan of the swing trades. But for me, you guys are thinking, okay, well, I entered on the 15 minute time frame in the same direction as the big arrow. That means I can have a super tight stop loss and get a whole bunch of pits. I mean, in theory, that sounds amazing. That sounds exciting. And that sounds great. But typically speaking, it doesn't usually line up, at least not if you're asking me. So the best person to ask about the now and later strategy, first and foremost, is Pat. But for me, a fully, so how do I answer your question? You had first asked how I confirm my triple arrows, and I'll, and I'll get to that answer. But yes, if you're trading from the 15 minute time frame, even if it's in the same quote unquote direction as the four hour, in my humble opinion, I think that you should be going for 15 minute kind of pips because it's going to give you the most accuracy. Because when you see perfect confirmations on the 15 minute time frame, it's usually only good for these, these kind of moves where it's, they're smaller moves even if it happens to be in the same direction as the four hour, because then you have to never again look at the 15 minute because the 15 minute is going to start telling you to sell, even though this was technically a buy on the 15 and a buy on the four hour. But now you're all tripped up. A lot of people have had a lot of confusion with that because then they try to get out. So in short, I think that you should be going for less pips if you're trading from the 15 minute time frame. And a lot of experts think the same. Okay, I got it because um, my analysis, I think, is good. It's just the pip count amount. But the management, so like, here's the thing. If, if your analysis is like 98% and your management is zero, you're still going to be blowing accounts. No yes. matter how we look at it. So your management is the most important thing. Your, your psychology, your rules, that's what we really want to be looking at. So let's take this pair. Somebody had mentioned in the group, I am in this in my live account, which I told you guys last night. Uh, I got in based off of confirmations back here. And now we have our breakout. But so for me to count this as a confirmed move, depending on what indicators you have on your chart, I use the four hour. I want my daily dot confirmations, triple arrows. So we have one, two, three, four hour and daily. So that's four, five. ADX and momentum, that's five or six, depending on how you count it. Crossover of our currency strength. Our MACD is crossed over and, and preferably our volume is going up and breaking above the zero. But either way, we've got all these confirmations and now we have a engulfing, powerful momentum candle breaking above the 50, hopefully retesting and then there we go. And then of course, there's a lot of different confirmations, but for me, the most simple, I just went out too far guys, I'm sorry. Let's see. Okay. Is, this is my last one. So when it breaks above this trend line, which it's doing now, oh, don't be a silly butt. Hold on. Yeah, I'm seeing the trend line. Well, without me drawing it, then yeah. Yes. So it yes. broke above there. So you've got a solid buy. It broke above the trend line. So you got a solid buy. That's a good thing. That gives me enough confirmation to say this is going to buy. Does it mean it's going to buy forever? No. That's where trade management comes into place. You have to know what you're risking versus how much you're going for, because otherwise you're just kind of shooting in the dark. I think that's my biggest problem, the trade management part. So for on this trade, for example, if you were to turn now, let's see, I put my stop loss there at 21. You have about a 50 pip stop loss because you're gonna. This is definitely retesting about 50% of this, but we didn't know that until after this candle opened, and that's okay. So it's retesting now. You have a 50 pip stop loss. I would want to go for at least a one to one bare minimum, preferably a two to one. So let's say we got in here. 
You can stack this twice if you wanted, mm -hmm. or you can go for the range. It depends on how you're trading. But for instance, if you were taking this just for a retracement, you don't have to know what the trend is doing all the time. You just have to be able to ride some of it. So if your stop loss is approximately 50 pips, you want your take profit to be 50 pips to 100 pips. And then now you've got really good risk management. But you can't do that on the 15 minute time frame. Correct. Because we don't want to. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Jenny. You are welcome. Thank you for hopping on. Okay. And uh, Dorian, let's see. Henry, I like this time a lot, actually. A whole bunch. Uh, for those who mentioned DBPCHF, um, if it will let me just scroll on this. Dorian, my ADR settings for the average daily range, that's just, it comes standard. It's that's just the regular, if I didn't do anything fancy to it, it comes that way. Um, Camry, I love the one hour time frame. In fact, I had a lot of success with it, but as I got better and I was trying to eliminate losses, I realized the best way to eliminate some of the losses that I did have was never taking one hour trades that were against the four hour. So I definitely would take fully confirmed on the one hour, like if all my stuff lined up on the one hour, but it was in the same direction as the four hour, I would totally do that. Resistant dot on GBP CHF four hour. Dorian, are you talking about this one or this one? Uh, the one that you're on. So, so then perfect. You got your because this was the pair we were looking at, right? To see if we got a. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you so mean just, yeah, I set my I set my alarm to nine fifty five, so I could uh, come back and check to see if it's a valid uh, resistance dot. So you're going to check it in four hours? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That's a lot of noise. Well, I've, I've pretty much only been trading the dots in the same direction as the daily dots. Mm -hmm. But either way, I mean, to see if it's valid, you might end up with getting just one or a couple of these dots like this. And that's okay, too. I was thinking more like if you were looking for your retest to take it for the buy. If you were yes, I'm, I'm waiting for the retest, but um, I'm also just ensuring that this is a technical level resistance if uh, the second dot supports the first. Gotcha. Awesome. Yes, sir. That looks good to me. But it's waking down already, so I'm guessing this one's going to bust, but we'll see. We shall see. Uh, to the person in the chat who asked how often I scan for setups in a week and what qualifies as a setup for my watch list. What qualifies for a setup from my watch list is originally what I was doing was I was looking for all one hour and four hour charts that were lining up, maybe not fully confirmed yet, but we're lining up. I made a watch list of anywhere from 10 to 15 pairs of, okay, what had news, uh, what had made its bigger move. Because on the four hour, you got to think this is weeks in between. So just catching any one of these kind of things is still very, very beneficial because this, let's see, this one happened on the 12th and it kind of bottomed out by the 18th. So this is six days. So maybe I saw something like this, I only saw one dot, I put that on my watch list, mm -hmm. and then I would just kind of come back either in the morning or in the evenings typically and check for uh, trades. I usually enter early New York. Um, my biggest swing trades I got in the habit of entering on Monday night, typically speaking, and otherwise Tuesday morning. And then that's pretty much all I did if some of those trades closed either in profit or a loss, I'm allowed to re-enter on Wednesday or Thursday, but I could have only had four to five trades running at a time um, per that strategy, per that account specifically. And that's really it. So what qualifies as a confirmed trade? I, I would write it down when I saw like just the big arrow on the four hour and then some stuff setting up on the one hour as on my watch list. But I would take it when like this happened, when it met enough of my rules. So in this case, we have a crossover. We have a, a breaking with the zero volume, uh, crossover, crossover plus momentum is going up, crossover, three whole arrows daily and four hour. And then we broke this, but this, of course, I mean, this isn't super advantageous. So we don't know what we don't know looking left. So now we have an actual momentum candle that broke the 50. But of course, that happened at the same time as you get this stinking sell support. 
So not super amazing, but I'm pretty sure I did take this trade, I think, in this area when I got this bullish candle in my live account, and that's why we see it reflected here. But either way, we did finally break the 50 and we broke the trend line. So that's what I was really hoping to see. Altogether, I have like 15 confirmations. I only need you know a handful of those to be accurate for me to count it. And then I'll take the trade and I'll, I'll stack it twice. I'll take one of them for like half of the ADR or the whole ADR, depending on the time frame I'm using. And then the other one I leave open to run. And that's usually the smaller position I'm not making. Just because it says 300 pips doesn't mean <clears throat> I'm doing a whole, whole bunch of, uh, you know, profit on that because for that runner, I'm, I don't have a huge lot size. It's just kind of that account pad that helps make up losses essentially. That's how I look at it. So does that answer your question? Let's see if I can go back to my Zoom. Hello. Hey, who's this? Hello. Hi, how are you? Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good, good morning. How can I help you? Uh, please, I'm looking at your charts. You have a different kind of indicator down there, the ADX, and I can see one currency relative strength there. Mm -hmm. So is this the setup you normally look at, or you have another set of indicators differently from this? And how do you relate these indicators to your entry? I think that's my question there. Okay, so this is on the marketplace, but it's no longer free. So you can find other relative strength indicators on the marketplace that is free. And, and this is kind of the setup I typically use. Uh, I kind of play around it for the most part. I do like the money tree string line when I was moving, so I didn't have access to that clearly on my phone regularly enough to be able to kind of analyze. So I kind of stuck with the 18 and just worked for me. But the money tree string line is very good. Um, I'm the one who kind of brought it into the group, I think. I just, I love it. It's amazing. Um, as for the currency strength indicator, you'll notice that it often lines up with the ADX set at 10. And I just, I find it to be very beneficial to know what the currency strengths, are, or like what the currencies are doing. And then of course, this is the MACD true. I actually got it from another group, but I love it. Um, it's the most accurate version of MACD that I've found. There's a lot of them out there. So this is kind of the trade setup that I'm looking at when I'm looking for either a swing trade or a Stairmaster trade. This is what I'm looking at, just this. So like if I were to be dragging and dropping, I'm not even hardly looking at other time frames. I'm just looking at uh, the four hour. Sometimes I'll click to the one hour if I'm unsure, but I'm only kind of paying attention to this. And if I really want to see what the currency strength is doing, I'll definitely go to the one hour because that's the best time frame to use it on. But this is all I'm doing. If I see support in the same direction as my daily, then that's all I'm doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Awesome. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I got it done. Thank you very much. You are welcome. To the person in the chat um, who asked if I'm taking a trade on the 15, and 30, 15 minute and 30 minute time frame, but you see that everything lines up on the one hour and four hour, can it turn into a swing? It absolutely can turn into a swing. I just find it's very difficult. Like, again, some people are really good at that and that's their strength. So I am not knocking it. At the end of the day, I believe we each have to find our own way. But for me, I like the simplicity of knowing what one time frame is doing and I don't have to know that. The 15 minutes is doing this and the one hour is doing this. So can it be a swing? Absolutely. And if you just keep moving your stop up, if it's a very safe swing, it's an amazing thing. So you can totally do it that way. And then of course you have the blessing of a, a tighter stop loss. Just in my experience, I, I wasn't too good at that. And that doesn't mean it's not a good way to trade because it is a good way to trade. I just wasn't good at trading that way. I hope that helps. Guys, any other questions, comments, or pairs? And a lot of the GBP pairs. Again, we're looking for them to go up, guys. We're not uh, we're not messing with you, the US dollar or the euro. So be wise and stay out of that. And other than that, that's about all I've got this morning. There are no other.
major questions? I have one. I don't know if it's a silly question. No, there's no such thing as a dumb question. I was that annoying girl. Okay. Um, let's say you wanted to trade one standard lot um, and you wanted to hold it long term, but at the same time, you do want to stack every time price comes to back and establishes support if we're going to the upside, would it be, um, um, would it make sense, I guess, to, I guess, uh, divide the one standard um, by how many times you believe you may stack? It depends on what the leverage is and what, like, so let's take this one because it happens to be the pair we're on. So not going around looking at a very perfect example. So let's say this was a downtrend. We have our triple arrows saying down. And now we get in because we have daily support and supply our support. So let's say you have uh, Hugo's Way or AFX. You're taking your first entry here. You have some drawdown that's not good with the standard lot. But you can trade a standard on an insanely small amount on AFX. And I think you can even trade a standard like on 500 bucks on Hugo's Way. You only trade one though on Hugo's Way because that's too high. It definitely cannot be euro on. So having said that, now you are in profit marginally. Well, that's not marginally at all. That's 79 pips, 70 pips. It goes against you by 50. That will blow your account with Hugo's way, but you'll still be open on AFX. So let's say you trim part of this profit. You closed half the position, so now you have a 0.5 open. Anywhere in here, you have an entire day to do that goes against you, but you're confident of your analysis. Mm -hmm. So now you have a 0.5 open, right? You can enter another trade here for a complete standard, okay? So you go into profit somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. And let's just say 30 pips, you trim half of it. You have 0.5 open, 0.5 open, but your account has probably doubled. Mm -hmm. Same concept over here. And you can keep doing this. And as you have enough mar marginal percentage available, you can just keep entering trades all the way down, provided your indicators line up. So the, now you're gonna stop trimming these. Now you're gonna cut these ones off. So when this goes against you, so if you're gonna close a position, don't close the first one, close these ones. Okay. And then you just keep going down. So this one move potentially could get you, you know, thousands and thousands of pips because you're going to leave some of these open. You're going to keep entering. You're going to keep stacking. So you can't really know how big this move is going to be to answer your complete question. Can you split it up? Yes. On your first initial entry, but now you have too many trades to manage too many trades to move the stop loss up too many trades to put a trailing stop on too many trades to wonder what your take profit is too many trades to close in case of news or an emergency or something happens. So for me, if I'm going to take this entry, I'm taking the whole thing as a standard lot. The whole thing as a standard lot, and then I can trim it, and I can close it, or I can whatever. But I'm not going to put like 0.25 four times right here, personally, because it's just a lot to manage. Yeah, I was thinking, um, let's say you did, um, let me see, uh, divide it. Yeah, four times. So you do 0.25 on the first order. And then where you got your second uh, vertical line, you do another 0.25. And then as you go along, another 0.25 until you reach uh, you know, the entire standard with four 0.25 orders. Well, are you and talking about the same time? Or are you talking about like as you're going down, you're going to keep adding to your position? As you go down, you keep adding to the position. But you keep an eye on your... Um, your, um, what do you call it again? Um, margin. Margin, yeah. Hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Uh, no, I would definitely. So when I first started, I was stacking my first entry four times, which again, I was pretty good at, but in all fairness, it's a lot to manage. And then when most people try to duplicate that, they didn't have as much uh, success with it. So I would say no for that reason alone, but in terms of what you're asking about as you go down, no, like why would I do that? So if, if this trade is already right and I put a standard on this, I make 700 bucks, okay, on this one little move. Um, and that, that's fantastic. And if, it, if I trade again, why am I gonna do a less and less and less? I mean, I might do half of that lot size, but I'm not gonna keep uh, 
going in that direction. Okay. So basically you just, um, you, you're scaling out thing when you talk about trimming. Yeah. So I w if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to, I want to keep this position open, but I'm going to keep backing with every one of these stair masters, the setups, I'm going to keep entering because now your account, let's say you, let's say you started with a thousand dollars. Let me hold on. Your account can definitely hold one standard. You just made 700 bucks on a thousand dollars. If you had closed it perfectly right here, odds are that's not the case. So let's say you closed half of your position with about 50 pips in profit. That's 0.5 times 50, right? Mm -hmm. and you still made 250 bucks. <clears throat> now right here, same concept. You entered a standard, but you closed it at 50 pips. You closed half of it at 50 pips. We already, we already measured this. This is way more. But again, now your $1,000 account is at 1500 bucks, and you have $1,000 in running profit. Okay, so let's say we took another entry here for another standard lot. You have to think at this point you're risking 10%, but now you're only risking 3%, which is silly because you're more sure of this trade than you are this trade. So your risk should actually be going up. I mean, in theory, everything is in theory always. But if you had taken this at another standard, now you've got this running with a 0.5, this running with a 0.5, this running with a 0.5. You've doubled your account already, more than doubled it. And let's see, let's come up to here for that retracement. So now you have another 1500 in running profit and you've doubled your account. So now if your account is twice as big, why are you still gonna use the same small lot size right here? Because now your account can handle more of a lot size. So that's why this should actually almost be growing. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you think that um, that Excel sheet that you provided would help um, you would choose your lot size according to, I guess, your balance? Yes, that's what it's designed to do. <laughs> Ooh, okay, it's all coming together now. <laughs> it's okay. I'm glad it helped. So the whole point of compounding, guys, is to grow. So if we're still say if we're still using the same lot size on trade thirty as we are at, at trade one, we're playing and we're not investing. We're not really getting anywhere. We're just playing with money as a hobby. Unless of course you're starting with ten to fifty thousand dollars and you're trading exclusive, you know, a certain strategy that you only need your ten pips at ten standards and that's all you want for the week, which is fine for some people. But in general, if you're compounding and you're starting like the most of us did, which is not from 10 to 20, 50 thousand dollars, you need to be growing your lot size with each week or with each each trade. So, but all right, guys, I think that's about it for this morning. I am going to check this chat that just lit up. Uh, you are welcome, Dorian. Um, how far do you use your stop loss from a trailing stop? I usually make sure my stop my trailing stop is uh, smaller than my stop loss. So. It depends on what my take profit is and depends on what pair you're trading, but at least 10 to 15 pips at minimum. Sometimes it'll be more. So sometimes you'll see, oh, like if I really don't like using 40, 50 pips stop losses, but on GBP pairs I do. Um, really depends on, on the strategy you're using. So like once I'm 50 pips in profit on my swing strategies, then I'll put a 20, 30 pip trailing stop in. And then no matter what happens with that pair, I'm definitely cashing out with money and I'm not too worried about it. So. Uh, and if I'm scalping, I just move my stop loss up. That's kind of how I do it. So, yes, sir. Thank you, Jenny. You are welcome. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a fantastic, happy, happy Thursday. I'm going to hop off. Uh, and I will definitely get in touch with Pat. And we'll kind of figure out what our schedules are going to be good doing. And we'll get all those announcements to you. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And God bless. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jenny. Have a great Thank weekend. You're welcome. Happy Thursday.